this is Bobby McAlpin. I'm an architect. I am in my house in Atlanta, Georgia uh, today, and I've been asked to talk to you about influences on my work. From the beginning of my practice back in the 80s, early 80s, um, my influences on my work really had to do with with the 1920s, uh, as I inventoried America, you know, what architecture has lasted. And it seemed to be that almost specifically anything that happened in the 1920s uh, remained good. It, it remained covetable property uh, for people. It was highly inheritable. And it became the foundation of my practice in the creation of inheritable architecture. Architects that have had an influence on me um, begin with Edwin Lutyens, uh, and they range all the way to Richard Neutra and Frank Lloyd Wright. So they were classicists and modernists, and Lutyens in particular had a very coy way of working within the margins of society to create what I consider to be rather avant-garde work. It, it was accepted under the guise of it being traditional. Um, but if you examine it, he was breaking a lot of rules and doing a lot of things that uh, had not been done before. And he was combining uh, sequences and changing the order of things uh, and took great liberties uh, in his architecture. Modernism has been a great influence on me because of the liberal and willful nature of it and its great connectivity to the outside world and to the landscape. So I tend to really court both things at once, uh, at least both things, if not many more. I probably wouldn't call myself a classicist. I feel like I'm more of a romantic and within the menu of things that I, I operate from and that I pull from, uh, classicism and modernism are just two of those things. I liken it to uh, when I was a boy uh, and I would see the box of 64 uh, Crayola crayons in the grocery store that had a built-in sharpener. And it was the only box that had both silver and gold. I think in my practice, uh, I have also waited to use classicism directly and modernism in my work, like those silver and gold crayons, knowing that neither one on their own would get me the portrait that I, that I sought. And really it takes a lot of influences from all over to build a human portrait of who stands before me. We are all built of lots of contradictions and it takes a lot of color in addition to silver and gold to depict anyone. Every time I begin a new project, what concerns me is not only solving the riddle that's in front of me, but it is creating a solution that will ride the test of time and will remain attractive to future generations that it become, after this particular client's use, a project and, and a property that is coveted. And that really has to do with its long-term stewardship. I think as time rolls on and my practice ages, now 35 years in, uh, or more, I guess more, <laughs> 37, 38, I look forward to the legacy of this work being almost a Camelot of sorts. I have attempted in these last years to turn my own name into not a person, but a place where a lot of talent resides. It certainly is the work that I want to stand out and last, but it is also the assemblage of people and the train of thought uh, that we have offered. Um, I want to continue beyond me so that the McAlpin place will continue to be a place where you could have your portrait painted in terms of a house uh, or a country property 
or whatever your fancy is.